What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. It's Kyle again here with Limitless Power Sports Service and Repair. What I got in the shop today is a 2005 Massimo MSU 500. Uh, he's a referral from a, another customer of mine. A gentleman was saying that uh, it would bog down really bad when he would run up hills, uh, wouldn't go very fast, and that, uh, you know, it just wouldn't wouldn't pull itself. Um, and he said he hasn't done much service to it, being that it's a 05 and it's 2021. Uh, my guess is automatically going to be clutches and belts. Uh, we'll take a look at the spark plug and a few smaller things like that, the air cleaner and all that, make sure it's all up to par and clean. Uh, but then he said he was cranking on it and cranking on it and it finally quit cranking over. The battery does have power in it. We'll definitely check the 12 volts and the connections on that like we have in all my other videos. We always start there, number one. But my guess is going to be to start a solenoid. On these Massimos and most of these Chinese units, pretty much almost anything, if you keep cranking on them constantly, that starter solenoid heats up really hot and they short themselves out internally. I've seen it a whole bunch on these. It's a very, very common problem. Uh, we'll go through the steps of how you can check that. Most of the time I'll just jump across it. If it fires off, I just know to replace it right away. Just pretty cheap, no if, ands, or buts about that. But we'll, we'll check to make sure that the ignition key and everything's working properly. And then we'll jump into that. And then we'll jump into the clutches and belts and take a look at that and see what's going on with the motor problem. All right, guys, so basically your starter relay is gonna be up underneath the hood here. We'll go ahead and pop this thing up. And it doesn't look like it has the bolts in the battery lid, or the battery box lid. Right here is your starter solenoid relay. Uh, here's your main fuse. Well, you can see it's not held down there very well. And then here's the connections. So what we can do really quick, we can just turn the key on and see if we hear a click. If we don't hear a click, we might probably have a possibility of not getting 12 volts to the starter solenoid, then we can check the voltage to it. So let's turn the key on real quick and see if we get any clicking sound. You hear everything power up, fuel pump, all that. And nothing, nothing at all. So, all right, so what we're gonna do, we're just gonna leave the key on. Matter of fact, I'll grab the multimeter and then we will test to see if we got 12 volts coming into this thing. So we're gonna put volts DC. I'm gonna walk around over here to the other side real quick. Well, you can also check your main fuse, but this is actually powers the fuel pump and everything. So we know that is good already. So we'll go hook here. We'll run to the negative. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. Let's set it up here for you. Go over here, over here to the negative. And we got 12.21, 12.31 volts. So we know we got good voltures through there. The easiest thing for me to do, honestly, what I'll do, I'll leave the key on and I will just jump across these two leads here, your two power leads that runs the power from the battery over to the starter and see if she turns over and fires off. Um, you know, we you know we have 12 volts and you don't, we don't hear it clicking and we know the main fuse is good. So my suspicion is this starter solenoids, like I said, I overdoing so many of them, I know it's going to be that. So we'll just jump across and see if this, uh, this guy fires right off. All right, guys, so let's just grab a screwdriver. Make sure you're holding on to the plastic. Don't grab yourself on any metal. And you can just jump across the two. It will spark a little bit. You hear it turn over. There we go. Fires right off. So that there, guys, tells me that the starter solenoid's bad. Like I said, they do get hot as you crank them over, and they do short out on the inside. Um, you can also test these wires here to see if you have any resistance between them. Uh, basically what happens when you turn the key on, you create a connection inside of here, a magnetic connection, which lets the power transfer from the in to the out down to the starter motor. When you let off the key, it flips back and then the power no longer crosses through here. So we'll get one of these ordered up for them. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do guys, I uh, got a new starter relay for it. It comes with a positive battery cable a new fuse, uh, everything right there. It's pretty much plug and play. So we'll go ahead and remove this one real quick. Very simple. We'll disconnect the hot side, the positive side of the battery, and then we'll remove this, unplug it, put the new one in, and we'll turn the key and see if it turns over. Uh, the throttle body is still hooked up in there. It's not on the intake, so it won't fire, but we'll know if it turns over and that cured our issue, which I'm pretty positive it does because I've replaced these a bazillion times. So we'll grab a, I'm gonna grab a couple 10 millimeter wrenches here real quick and just break this loose. It's 
super simple job. I like to keep the extra screws and washers, throw them in a pile. It's nice to have extra hardware around. Go ahead and unplug it over here. Bam, old one's out. We'll toss it to the side, throw it up there in my toolbox, and we got the new one to go in. Double check the fuse, make sure it's good. It is good, it is a 30 amp fuse, so we're good there. I'm gonna leave that unplugged until I get the hot side picked up on here. And I'll leave these loose so I can install everything. And then we get the proper angle on the wires here. Nice and tight. Boy, their new wire is actually way longer than the stock one that came on there. So I'm gonna flip this around here real quick. That way it gives us a little more, a little more room for adjustability. Figure out the proper angle we wanna run that hot lead there. Gotta love Stanley tools, guys. I mean, it's what I buy Stanley and some Harbor Freight stuff for. I love to grind those down to make them fit places, weird places. Now my snap-on stuff, it doesn't get touched. We don't, we don't grind on those. But all that cheap Walmart and Harbor Freight stuff, they're good to grind down and bend for, for crazy situations you're having problems get things into without having to buy that super expensive specialty wrench, uh, which we all know those can be pretty darn expensive depending on what specialty tool you need and what uh, maker model you're working on. down the cables now you don't have to wrench on these crazy hard pretty simple nice nice and tight nothing crazy over torquing we don't want to twist anything off on the inside all right now plug it into the wiring harness Nice and tight. Find the other spot to secure this guy to. All right, so I'm gonna walk around, turn the key on, see if we get, uh, get it turned over or not, which I'm pretty sure we probably will. There you go, boom. Super simple fix on that one, guys. Like I said, it's a very common issue start of solenoids going out on these things when you're cranking them and cranking them and cranking them. Uh, happens to a lot of models, a lot of different brands. Whoops, sorry about kicking the camera there. Make sure you guys still see what's going on here. But uh, I'm gonna bend this tab up just a smidge because they got this. Actually, I can just move this in a different location, move it one over. There we go. That gives it a little more room. All right, so start of solenoids replaced. Let's cover up the nuts and bolts here. So don't make sure we keep any water or mud or anything from getting on there, possibly crossing it up and getting 12 volts directly to the starter all the time. We don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna cover this back up and then we're gonna move on to the throttle body. We're gonna pull it off, clean it, put it back on, fire this up, take a look at the belt to make sure it tracks on there right and uh, 
then we'll slap it back together and uh, hopefully our runnability issue will be taken care of then too.